Okay, how's everybody doing today? Um, we made quite a bit of progress on the theater, so I figured I'd show you what we got going on here. Um, we spent all day in here on Saturday and got the soffits built and the lighting in uh, for the uh, the soffits. So instead of sconces, I'm doing uh, can lights around the room, as you can see here. It, the room's a little bit wider than it is long, so we're doing four cans across the back wall, uh, three on each side wall, and then the front wall, the um, it's the same spacing as the four cans on the back wall, but minus the two cans in the center, because that's where the screen's going to be. And um, I want to be able to have the cans on while the screen's on, and I don't want to have glare on the TV. Uh, or future potential projection screen. Um, so I started running wire and um, redid redid some of the power on the front wall like I'm over here the rack's going to end about here then the speaker is going to be on a speaker stand and then the subwoofer is going to be in the corner so this um, nail on box for the power was over here like right where I needed to put the where the speaker wire is going to come out and then uh, so I figured uh, I'll just redo it before the wall's up because I'm going to stare at it every time and uh, it's going to be like, oh man, why didn't, why didn't I put the power over here? So the power is now behind where the subwoofer is going, so the sub can just plug directly into that. Uh, also, the power is now running off of the main 10 gauge for the rack. So the front two outlets here for the subs are on the same circuit as the rack equipment uh, so the it'll all be all the electronics for the theater are going to be on one breaker the lighting and the uh, power reclined seats are going to be on another breaker that's kind of the idea uh, I want all the same grounds for all the electronics in the theater so there isn't any ground loop problems because that's caused by impedance differentials across ground so if you have the sub plugged into one circuit the subs electrically connected to the receiver then the receiver is plugged into another circuit you can have this ground loop issue and those are horrible uh, so all on one circuit i started pulling the speaker wire i got most of them done i thought i was done and then i uh found two more that I forgot to do because uh, I'm wiring for a lot of speakers. Uh, I still also have to wire the coax and the ethernet. Um, coax is going to be run, here's the where the low voltage goes into the wall. Uh, coax I'm using to run the subwoofer uh, connections. Oh, I mean to this one here. So this is going to be speaker wire and subwoofer RCA out. Uh, instead of having another nail on box for the subwoofer out, it just seems kind of uh, excessive. So I'll have the subwoofer output and the speaker wire coming out of the same, uh, same one there. Uh, I am using 12 gauge wire. Uh, so I was between 14 and 12 gauge. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's 50 bucks more or something for the 12 gauge. And I, honestly, I don't even know why I had any kind of uh, hard time making that decision because uh, I, I know myself and 12 gauge, it has to be 12. It has to be 12 because it's going to be, you know, once these walls are up, I'm probably never going to redo them ever. So uh, this will, the wire will handle whatever system I ever do in the future. Uh, 14 would have been enough, you know, for this system, but might as well put the extra copper in and then I don't have to think about it. Uh, so up in the ceiling, the lights, by the way, the can lights were a bit over 400 bucks. Uh, they're not inexpensive, but they are dimmable and they can actually be... Uh, camera will probably adjust the white balance here but they can be 
five different levels of white that can go from really warm to daylight. Uh, so I'm not sure which one I'm going to go with. Probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I wired up the... Or I put the... I got the pre-construction brackets for the in-ceiling speakers. And I got those screwed up there nice and tight. Um, for the Atmos, the surround channels... Well, this is the surround back. Uh, for Atmos, they actually want all the speakers in the same plane. So the same height. But they say, you know, if I put it in the same plane... If I put it in the same plane, it would be blocked by the back of the chair. I don't want a speaker firing into the back of the seat. This isn't the seat I'll be using, but just for just for a illustration here. Um, so they say you can go up to one and a quarter times the height of the front. So that's exactly where these are at. Uh, I've got these at 50 inches. The speaker will mount below this. So it's going to screw into the, the mount will screw into the joist here, but um, the wire will come out of an inverted nose right here. And uh, since the speaker will be mounted here, you won't see this. This will be uh, concealed by the speaker. Uh, same thing with the surround backs. Uh, down here, we've got power. This is on that separate circuit. This is with the lighting, so this is just really for the... Uh, power recline chairs but I'm actually going to wire in another coax run just in case I want to do four subs one day so I'm wearing another sub to there and I'm wearing another sub down here uh, I'm not going to start off with four subs but um, don't mind the uh, holes in the wall that's where the outlets were originally I'm not going to start off with four subs because uh, I had one sub in my other area and it seemed like it was pretty, uh, it was plenty of base on its own. And uh, I hadn't even enclosed the room yet, so now that the room's going to be enclosed, there'll be a sub on either side and I think two of them will actually pound like crazy in here. Uh, plus, once the drywall gets up, uh, I got to insulate yet. Um, I picked up some of this foam board that you kind of lay in the walls, but with my wires here and all the nail-on boxes and stuff, uh, I don't think I could even put it in the wall anywhere. It just wouldn't fit. Um, so I got to take it back. Uh, I'm going to use more traditional insulation. I got to stuff it. This is the front wall of the house, so I've got to stuff it all up in there. In this, I don't know what you call it, the sill plate area um, because that's where most of the energy is going to be lost for actually insulation purposes and then I'm going to put some down the walls just so it doesn't sound like a big hollow echo chamber you know uh, sonically I want it to uh, sound better in the room and then I was thinking of stuffing some up in the ceiling because I just went upstairs and uh, I could hear my little Sonos speaker pretty clearly. I got a little Sonos uh, one over here that uh, I'm, I was playing and I can hear it pretty clearly because it's just soaking right up into the vents and stuff so uh, I'm thinking I'll put some up there as well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I also wired for front highs but they're a bit wider than the mains. So in an Atmos system you can do front highs and you can do front wides. Uh, a true front wide would probably be over here down the wall a little bit, but a front high would be directly above the speaker. So I'm doing a front high wide and we'll see how that functions. Um, I don't have to uh, I don't have to use them all the time but I think uh, I think it could really expand the front sound stage. Uh, I've heard it before and it, the front sound it sounded like a, a whole wall of sound um, so that's what I'm looking for it's a small wall this is a very wide angle lens so the, in the in the camera I'm sure the room looks a lot bigger than it is but I mean here's two recliners uh, it's going to be four seats across so it'll be love seat in the center recliner recliner with attached arms and uh, there's only going to be about a foot and a half on each side of room. 
so it's a small room it's 12 by 13 but uh, that just means I can use smaller speakers and get incredible dynamics uh, for the glass block windows here we keep think, trying to think of a solution to cover these and uh, the more I think about it it's it's a theater room right it's gonna be dark uh, I want the room light controlled. I also don't really want to break up the pattern of a smooth wall with two ugly windows that just give you a good view of nothing. Um, so the more I think about it, we might be framing those in and drywalling over them. Uh, this drywall is a little cracked here anyway, right here. So I'm thinking, why not we rip this out, rip that out, drywall the entire wall, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, this is this wall's just furring strips, uh, so I have to figure out a way to get speaker wire to here and screw in the speaker right here too. So while it's ripped out, we can probably put some wood in there. We can pull the speaker wire, and then we can drywall over it. Anyway, that's my thoughts until uh, as of now. If you have any ideas on how to uh, conceal glass block windows but potentially still use them, uh, let me know. Uh, I don't want it to look like curtains with a light gap all the way around, you know. So a shade that you pull over, or even a motorized shade, there's going to be a light gap all the way around. Anyway, that's it. That's it for this update. We'll be back for more when we get some more stuff done. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.